everyone, I'm Sapphire and you're watching Pop Art on Pop Post. In this episode, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Victoria Ying and Helen Chen, two very talented women who make up part of the lovely ladies of Disney Collective. Hello everybody, I am Sapphire and you are watching Pop Art on Pop Post. And today I have two very talented women with me. Um, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. I'm Victoria Ying. Um, I'm a visual development artist and a children's book author illustrator. I worked on Tangled, Frozen, Big Hero 6, uh, Paper Man, Wreck-It Ralph, Zootopia, and Moana. And I am currently working on my debut author illustrator children's book. Hi, I'm Helen Chen. I'm also a Vizlev artist. Um, I've worked on Paper Man, Wreck-It Ralph, Big Hero 6 for Disney, and then on the side I also do you know, some illustration work for our comics, so I do the covers for Marvel Silk, and that's it. So you are part of a collective called The Lovely Ladies of Disney. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is and how it came about? Lovely Ladies is a book project that spawned from Victoria talking to a gallery in France called Arludique. And um, from that conversation, the idea of just bringing together some female artists that all happened to be working at Disney at the time to do this gallery and this book. And you guys launched a Kickstarter for it? Yeah, uh, we really were just looking for just the funds to print the book. We weren't expecting it to be as big as it did. Um, but yeah, we launched a Kickstarter. We were originally just looking for something like $7,000 and just to get it out there. Um, and yeah, it ended up doing really well and up making um, more than a thousand percent of its goal. What do you think it was about the Lovely Ladies project that drew so many backers? The timing was just about right. Like we had um, a groundswell of young women who were interested in animation, who were interested in art, and um, people who just wanted to kind of explore and see what we did on our free time, as well as kind of um, just to kind of see the showcase of work from people who maybe they hadn't necessarily seen on the internet. You know, there's kind of a demographic change that's happening in the animation world that isn't just a trend that I've noticed, but it's something that a lot of schools are noticing too. Like 10 years ago, I could name on one hand the number of women artists that I could even think of. And now, you know, there's so many, they're literally uncountable. What are your thoughts on the evolution of female characters in animation? Female characters in animation, definitely, since the 80s even, they've been developing and becoming more fully fleshed out. I think we still have a long way to go just in terms of our culture. Like we still have a very patriarchal society. There's still a lot of people who don't want to accept women necessarily in the positions that we want to tell their stories from. But um, I think that, you know, more and more the young people of our generation, like the kids who are interested in the tumblers who are writing their own fan fiction, who want to see, you know, people of color and LGBT characters. Um, they're really creating that content for themselves. And I think pretty soon, like those kids are gonna be in a position to be making that stuff. And we're seeing more and more of it. Like I think that, um, you know, the Korra thing, like of Korra, how she at the end is revealed to kind of have a relationship with a woman, that was very much fueled by the fans. Right, <laughs> Like yeah. if without their involvement, without their pushing for that relationship, it might not have happened. And I think that that kind of participation, that back and forth and that understanding of that generation now is really moving forward the dialogue of the female experience. Um, some of my favorite forms of entertainment, um, like video games, things like that, you can really see the shift happening. I mean, I played The Last Dragon Age, you can pretty much choose whatever character you want. One of my favorite games from a couple years ago, Last of Us, there was a prequel with the main character who's a girl who has this very complicated and very coming of age type of romance with her best friend who was also a girl. And it's not something that the, um, and I really love that piece because it was like, it wasn't like they were trying to, you know, hammer some sort of idea first and then the story second. They just let it kind of come naturally and it really felt like you're experiencing this girl kind of develop feelings for her friends and not know how to explore it and how they deal with it in this fantastical world with zombies and stuff. Speaking about fans kind of motivating the way a story goes, do you guys have any thoughts on stuff like the give also a girlfriend thing, like how fans are basically like putting a lot of pressure mm -hmm. like um, on the creators. Like how do you feel about that type of reaction from fans, you know? Well, I think more than anything, the fan pushing, the fans pushing for that kind of thing kind of lets creators know that that's okay to do that. Mm. Because I don't know that in like five or 10 years ago, if Cora was made then that that would have happened. But because there's a lot of that kind of talk going on online about being accepting of that relationship, I think it gives the creators kind of ammunition 
back to the studio, whoever is kind of like maybe not wanting to do and be like, hey, people actually want this. Thank you guys so much for joining us.、Uh, if you want to follow them on social media, the links are down below in the description. If you'd like to listen to our extended conversation with Helen and Victoria, stay tuned for the premiere of the Pop Post podcast coming this summer.